So this right here is the Eufy Doorbell Duo, a unique doorbell with two cameras, one for viewing people and one for viewing packages. As great as this doorbell is, it does not natively support Apple's HomeKit, my preferred smart home platform, and maybe yours as well. However, I found an easy and simple way that you can get the Eufy Doorbell Duo into HomeKit and view the live feed with all of your other HomeKit cameras. So today, I'll walk you through the setup process step by step on how to get the Eufy Doorbell Duo into HomeKit. We'll check out the incredible features that you do and don't get in the Apple Home app and what the overall experience has been like, including battery life. I made a review video on the Eufy Doorbell Duo and all the insane features that it has, like package and facial recognition, free video storage, and the ability to be wired or battery powered, and I'll leave that link right up here or somewhere right up here. Now, as much as I like this doorbell, it does not natively support Apple's HomeKit like some of their other cameras do. But you can get it into HomeKit by using a third-party bridge and software to run the bridge, which is what you'll need to do this. A third-party bridge essentially creates a bridge between a device and HomeKit and allows a non-native smart device to work with Apple HomeKit. There are different kinds of third-party bridges on the market that allow you to get a non-native HomeKit device to work with HomeKit, like Hoobs or HomeBridge. I have used Hoobs and HomeBridge both before and I personally prefer using HomeBridge. I find HomeBridge to be easier to use and run a bit more reliably than using Hoobs. So we'll be using HomeBridge in this video, but this doorbell also works with Hoobs and I'll leave instructions on how to do that in the description below. Next you'll need a device that is powerful enough to run the bridge's software and is powerful enough for live video streaming. The one that I'm using in this video is a Raspberry Pi 4. You also need to set up the home bridge or hoops before adding the doorbell to HomeKit. There's only four steps that you need to do to get the doorbell into HomeKit and step number one is to set up a family or guest account. You'll first have to create a Eufy account with two-factor authentication enabled and set up the Eufy Doorbell Dual. Next, create a guest account and enable two-factor factor authentication. You can use your main Eufy account with HomeBridge, but it can often create some issues down the road. So for better reliability, it's best to create a separate family slash guest account for HomeBridge. Next, you'll need to share the device that you want to add to HomeKit from your main account to your new guest account. You can choose to share your entire home or only specific devices. So for just the doorbell, choose share device, tap invite, give the new account admin access, and here you can choose the doorbell. The Eufy Doorbell Duo does require the home base too, so you'll have to share the base and all the devices connected to the base with the guest account. The only way to share the doorbell only and no other devices is by having just the doorbell only connected to the base and no other devices. Type in the email address of the guest account that you just made. Next, log into the Eufy app with the new guest account and accept the invite and now you'll have access to the cameras, or in this case, the doorbell. Step number two is to add the Eufy plugin to HomeBridge. Open up HomeBridge via a web browser, and there's two ways that you can add the plugin. If you're familiar with coding and are comfortable with that, then you can open up the terminal and type in the terminal command. Or an easier way, and the way that I personally prefer, is by going to the plugins tab at the top, and in the search box, type in Eufy security and install the official verified Eufy plugin. Once you install it, you'll see a bunch of code pop up here. Just ignore it and let it do its thing. I should mention that this plugin is not officially made or supported by Eufy. And there's a great team who put this plugin together and they're good about updating the plugin pretty often with bug fixes and the occasional new features. So it's a use at your own risk type of thing. Step number three is to configure the Eufy doorbell settings. Once the plugin is done installing, you'll be prompted to enter your username and password. This is the guest account that we created earlier in the video. Then you'll see all the devices that the guest account has access to. So here's the home base too, and the doorbell, and other cameras that I have connected to the space. Which, by the way, the security modes from the Eufy app are exposed in HomeBridge and can be synced to HomeKit as a security system. More on this later on. All of the cameras will appear in HomeKit now once we add the HomeBridge to HomeKit, but if you don't want a specific camera to appear in HomeKit, say like this Eufy 2C camera I have that natively works with HomeKit, then just click on the camera and enable ignore device. Now what we want to focus on is this doorbell right here. There's a bunch of settings that you can configure and customize to your liking, so let's check them out. There's local live stream caching, which sets the streaming video to a little lower than, than usual and allows for faster live stream startup times. The lower video quality still looks great and I would recommend enabling this. However, it does drain battery life a little bit faster if you're using the battery powered UV Dual Dual, so just keep that in mind. Next is a section for audio. Enabling audio enables streaming one-way audio and you can hear the person on the other end. If you do have issues, then you can disable this, but I've had this enabled with the default sample 
great and it works well. Though the audio quality from the Apple Home app sounds very weird. We'll dive deeper into this later on. Enabling TalkBack allows for two-way talk, so you can talk to somebody from the Apple Home app. If you do have this feature disabled, then you can only hear the person on the other end and you're not able to talk to them from the Apple Home app. You will need to use the Eufy app to talk to somebody on the other end. Next is some HomeKit features. You can choose to display a switch in the Apple Home app for turning the camera on or off, disabling motion detection, or even the indoor chime. There's settings for snapshots, which is a quick thumbnail picture that you see in the Home app of recent footage. You can customize how the doorbell processes snapshots, and each option has their own pros and cons when it comes to speed, reliability, and battery life, as indicated by these icons here. You want to find a good balance that you like. Again, my doorbell is battery powered, so I choose cloud snapshots, which gives me the best battery life, even though the snapshot is gonna be outdated. But I don't really mind this. You can also choose how often these snapshot refreshes down here if you like. Keep in mind that if you are using the battery powered version of this doorbell, the faster the doorbell has to refresh a snapshot, the more the battery life will drain. The Home app can try to send you a snapshot when the doorbell is pressed, but I did not find enabling this to be that helpful, as well as enabling night vision improvements. And finally, there's advanced video configuration. And this is more technical video details like specific video codecs and sizing that could improve the video experience. There's presets available with specific video settings if you want to try them. I think the doorbell looks good with just the default settings. Now that we have the Eufy plugin set up in HomeBridge, we can now add this doorbell to the Apple Home app and check out all the incredible features that this doorbell has in the Apple Home app. And the features that this doorbell has will surprise you, kind of like you'll be surprised to see what's inside this box. These are wallets by Exter, who is the sponsor of today's video. Exter makes high quality, practical, and minimalist looking wallets that are easier to use and harder to lose. And their wallets have features like no other wallets have on the market today. They can hold anywhere from 1 to 12 cards and they all have this unique quick release button on the side that will fan out all of your cards with one click, as well as protecting your cards against RFID skimming. Some wallets also have a cash strap in the back if you like to carry around bills. Extra wallets come in a wide variety of colors and materials. They just launched their new Parliament wallet in this incredible limited edition black Saffiano color, made from premium Italian Saffiano leather that just looks stunning. And to top it all off, Extra sells other products as well, like this MagSafe card holder, a tracker card in case you lose your wallet, and so much more. Use code ADAMSTECHLIFE at the checkout at the link below to get up to 25% off of Extra wallets. And a huge thank you to Extra for sponsoring today. Today's video. And now, what you have been waiting for, how do you get the Eufy Doorbell Dual into the Apple Home app? And that leads us to step number four. And there's two ways that you can do this, either bridged or unbridged. And I'd recommend going with unbridged, but let's look at the pros and cons of each option to see which one is best for you. The first way is by bridging a device to HomeBridge. So whenever you add the HomeBridge to the Home app by scanning the QR code, all the plugins and devices that you have connected to HomeBridge will automatically appear in the Home app, usually in the default room. Once you have the Eufy plugin installed and configured, you should see the Eufy base, the doorbell, and any other accessories that you have enabled from HomeBridge. The base is exposed as a security system and you can easily switch modes. These modes can be configured to the modes from the Eufy app. And here's the doorbell, and as you can see, it loads up really fast, and here's the switches for toggling the motion and the power. If you don't see the default room, then tap on the three dots on the top right in the Apple Home app, tap on Home Settings, scroll down to Home Hubs and Bridges, scroll down to Bridges, and tap on the Home Bridge. And finally, tap on the Accessories, and here you can see most of the accessories connected to the bridge and what room that they're in. Just tap on a device and here you can easily change the room. Now the pro with bridging a device is that once you add the home bridge to home kit, all the devices that are connected to home bridge will automatically get added to the Apple Home app. And you really don't have to do any other setup. There is one major con with doing this though, especially if you are connecting devices from different brands to work with HomeKit. If an accessory is being slow to respond or having issues, then it can slow down other devices connected to HomeBridge, creating an unreliable and frustrating experience. You're not able to remove a single device connected to HomeBridge from the Home app, only the entire HomeBridge and all the devices connected to it. 
So if you have, let's say four different devices in the home app, you're not able to remove just the one device that is not working correctly. You have to remove the entire bridge, which removes all devices from the Apple home app, and then you have to reset them all up. This means having a device bridged makes troubleshooting very difficult. The other way is by unbridging a device, which allows each device to run as a child device, separate from home bridge. And this is the way that I would personally recommend. When you're in the plugins tab, find the Eufy plugin and click on the wrench icon and choose bridge settings and enable Eufy security, then restart home bridge. Go back to the plugin and you'll see a QR code icon. Tap on that and you'll see a QR code. Now open the home app and scan the QR code to add the device like usual, and it'll add all the devices from Homebridge. You'll be able to rename the doorbell and security system and add each device to specific rooms. The biggest pro with this is that if one device is not responding, then it will not slow down other devices. So this experience tends to be more reliable and run more smoothly. If the device is having issues, then you can just restart or remove the single device and not the entire home bridge, making troubleshooting easier. The Eufy bridge appears as an individual bridge in the home hubs section in the home app. Now the con with this is that you have to manually add each device by scanning a QR code, which can take a while if you're adding multiple devices. From my personal experience, I found the Eufy Doorbell Dual plugin to run faster and more reliably by unbridging the devices. When I first set up my Raspberry Pi, I set up the Eufy Doorbell plugin and another plugin to get some lights to work with HomeKit. Soon after adding all these devices, the Eufy Doorbell had lots of issues and constantly went offline. So I unbridged the device and now it works much better. My lights are running in bridged mode and my doorbell is running unbridged and things are working well. Your experience may vary if you're only using the Eufy plugin in bridge mode and don't use any other plugins. Now that we have this doorbell in the Apple Home app, let's look at the features that you do get and features that you don't get that I wish this doorbell had. The doorbell is exposed as a doorbell with a doorbell icon and you can view the live stream. And it can take a little longer to load than other native cameras since the doorbell has to go through the Eufy home base, then through home bridge, then to the Apple home app, but it's still relatively fast. Now this doorbell supports 2K quality, but the Apple home app usually supports 1080p, but since this camera is not native to HomeKit, I think it's the full 2K quality. It looks about as good as streaming from the Eufy app. I'm not sure how many live streams you can have going on at one time. At one point, I had three live streams going, two from the Apple Home app from two different devices and one from the Eufy app, and the doorbell was able to stream with no issues. One feature I really like about the Eufy Doorbell Dual is that you can toggle between different views of the second camera. So you could have the bottom camera in a corner or just do a split view for a more natural viewing. You'll only be able to make these changes in the Eufy app and not in the Apple Home app, but these settings are mirrored in the Home app as well and updates right away if you make the changes in the Eufy app. And I must say, viewing the split view in the Home app is really nice. There is a speaker exposed so you can hear what's going on on the other end and the audio quality sounds fine. A mic can be exposed if you enable this in home bridge so you can talk to somebody on the other end, but the audio quality coming out of the camera is very strange. I am now talking to the UV Doorbell Duel from the Apple Home app and as you can tell the pitch of my voice is a lot lower than it usually is. And here's how the audio quality sounds whenever you're talking to the doorbell from the UV app. As you can tell, my voice sounds like how it normally does. Um, so everything sounds good from the UV app, just in the Apple Home app, things sound a little bit weird. Next, you can see the battery life. We'll dive deeper into this later on and see how having the doorbell in the Home app and the UV app impacts the battery life and it's not what you'd expect. Next, you can see additional accessories. So here you can toggle the motion detection or the power on and off, and you can have these displayed as two separate tiles if you want, and the doorbell is fast to respond when toggling these settings. When it comes to motion detection, the doorbell is quick to send an alert when motion is detected. It's about as fast as the actual Eufy app, and if you press and hold on the alert, then it can actually load up the live stream, which is really cool. When the doorbell button is pressed, you'll get an alert pretty quickly, and if the doorbell detects a person, then the alert will say someone rang the doorbell. But if it does not detect somebody was there, it'll just say the doorbell rang. At the very bottom in the home app, you'll see info about the doorbell, and it does say that the doorbell is not officially HomeKit certified. Which leads me to some of the features that you do not get with this doorbell in the Apple Home app. And one major one is HomeKit Secure Video Support. The Eufy Doorbell Dual unfortunately does not support Apple's HomeKit Secure Video, which is Apple's cloud recording, but video clips are recorded and stored on the base for free and viewable in the Eufy app. 
Other features you will not find in the Hall map are some of my favorite features of this doorbell, including package detection features. Like the doorbell can alert you when a package has been delivered, when it has been picked up, or even remind you when a package is still on your front porch, as well as facial recognition features like who was at the door. Now keep in mind to adjust any specific settings of the doorbell like motion detection, speaker volume, and auto ring responses, you'll need to use the Eufy app to make these changes. The team developing this plugin has mentioned working on HomeKit secure video support, but have ran into some issues and it's not officially supported yet. Now, it is possible that if a camera supports RTSP, then you could do something like scripted or camera UI to give the camera HomeKit secure video support. But unfortunately, the Eufy Doorbell Duo does not even support RTSP. So I'm not sure if HomeKit Secure Video will ever come to this doorbell, but who knows, things could change later on. With all the features that you do not get in the Apple Home app, there are some additional features that you get with this doorbell if you have an Apple TV or a HomePod. Starting with the Apple TV, you're able to view the doorbell with your other cameras and tap into a live feed and even control devices that are in the same room as the doorbell in the Home app. When motion is detected, a motion alert pop-up can appear on the Apple TV with a snapshot of what the motion was. Then it will load the live feed. When the doorbell button is pressed, you'll also get an alert as well and it will load the live stream, though this can take a few seconds to load. If you have a HomePod or a HomePod mini, then you're able to use them as doorbell chimes. So when the doorbell is pressed, a HomePod can play a chime sound. You're able to configure which HomePods play the alert and which ones don't. I think an indoor chime will still play when the doorbell button is pressed. I'm using the battery powered version of this doorbell and not the wired version, so I'm not entirely sure, but I would guess that an indoor chime would still work. And from what I've been reading online, it does. So I've been using the battery powered version of the UP Doorbell Duo in HomeKit for a few months now, and surprisingly, the battery life is not that bad. Now keep in mind that this plugin is not officially made or supported by Eufy and not optimized for the best battery life. It's created by a team of developers, so this is a use at your own risk kind of thing. Before I added the Eufy Doorbell Duo to HomeKit, I was averaging around two to three months on battery life before I had to recharge the doorbell. After using the doorbell in HomeKit for a few months now, battery life seemed to be about as it was before adding it to HomeKit. I'm getting a little a bit less than two months, which is not that bad considering the doorbell is now having to do more work like talking to Homebridge. So even though the battery life is a little bit worse, that's expected and I'm surprised the battery life has not been impacted more. There are some settings that you can change to improve the battery life, like limiting the snapshot frequency, how often and for how long you stream the doorbell in the Apple Home app, and overall motion settings and frequency, just to name a few. While testing this doorbell for this video, I was often adjusting settings and used it more than I usually would, so it lasted about a month before needing to be recharged. I used this doorbell in the Apple Home app for live streaming only and have disabled all alerts from the Apple Home app for this camera. I use the Eufy app for all my alerts since I can get specific alerts like package detection and facial recognition. For the most part, using this doorbell in the Apple Home app, I've not really had that many issues, but there are a few that I have experienced. Sometimes I'll get the typical no response message when I open the Home app, but when I tap on the doorbell, it starts streaming the live feed. So this could be a caching issue or some sort of communication issue with the doorbell and home bridge. Another issue I ran into is a snapshot not available, which means the doorbell was not able to load a snapshot or a quick thumbnail of recent footage. But whenever I opened up the live stream, it played perfectly fine. So again, it must be a bug of some sort. If you are having issues with this plugin, then you can first restart the child devices, then try restarting home bridge. And if that still does not work, then you can can unpair the accessories from HomeKit, which will remove all the unbridged devices, or you can even remove a single device if just one device is having issues. I've been using the Eufy Doorbell Duo in HomeKit for about three months now, and overall it works pretty good in HomeKit. It's been great being able to ask Siri to show me the live feed of my doorbell, view my live feed on my Apple TV, and get doorbell chime alerts on my HomePods. Occasionally, I'll have a few bugs and error messages, but usually just restarting the Eufy plugin or HomeBridge gets things working again. And again, I would recommend using one app for alerts, either the Eufy app or the Home app, and not both to reduce unnecessary alerts. I personally use the Eufy app for alerts and HomeKit just for streaming. And that's something that I would recommend if you want these specific doorbell alerts, like package detection and facial recognition, as these alerts are not supported by Apple. Here's my full review of the Eufy Doorbell Duel. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see y'all in the next one.